Hi, welcome everyone. Again, we are ready with our new session podcast today. Uh, again, a broad student who is working right now with Wells Fargo, a well reputed name in the industry, in the banking. We will dive deep into her journey and discuss most of the realistic questions, how she did it. So let's welcome Mansa. Hi, Mansa. Hi, Yashan. I'm so glad you are here today. And first of all, heartily thankful to you. Like most of the people who are in abroad working also, then Monday to Friday their job and on Saturday, some people like me come. Can we do a podcast? No, absolutely more than happy to be a part of this. And I'm happy that you're doing something which is more candid and not, um, you know, for profit or for sales purposes. So that is really nice that it's just a generic talk. Okay, so we will start with very general conversation only. And uh, it's like open platform, whatever you would like to share, you can share in any words you would like, like. You can share the exact truth, whichever you like, which most people may think this is not the reality we are getting to know on Instagram, on YouTube or on through consultants who are letting people to know for the masters or anything. (laughs) So I know you have a lot of experience, but let's start. What was your undergraduate and what was your first job? If you can share, how was your first experience? Sure. Uh, my undergrad was in BCom from Bangalore University, Bachelors of Commerce, and um, it was nice. But at the end of it, I didn't feel like I learned much. To be honest, I didn't understand what happened <laughs> during undergrad, and um, but it took me quite some time to get a nice job, and I started working at um, State Street which is a custodian bank. And this was again in Bangalore itself. So it was, I think, a nice start and I've been very lucky and thankful to have started there. So how long, like how many years you worked in India before coming to United States? I, um, so apart from a few, few, you know, random jobs that I did in business development and everything, but that was, you know, me, finding my space uh, and finding my career apart from all that in finance I have worked for about six years oh wow six years <laughs> and how suddenly like after six years I can imagine you might be at well stable position and might be making a good earning as you said you started working in Bangalore so Bangalore is known as the IT hub of India and maybe financial hub of India also so how you made this decision like OK, let's do something more like let's pursue masters. Would you like to share what was the incident or what were your thoughts about before that and how you did it? Yeah, actually, um, it wasn't a very well formed thought. It wasn't that I have to do uh, you know, a master's degree no matter what. It wasn't like that. Um, so I was working. Um, in Bangalore, while I decided to move, I was working at JP Morgan Chase and it was a good job and literally nothing to complain about. It was very nice. Um, the pay was great. The only thing was that I'm like, okay, now what? You know, like I got what I wanted. And then I started thinking, um, this can go on, right? Obviously, you slowly grow in your career and everything. You can get your, there are so many certifications in finance especially that you don't really need a college degree to grow in a career in finance you can go through you know this the CFA CPA CMA FRM and there's so many other certifications which are great um so I and I also did my CMA certification because I was into management accounting um But then I was like, you know, let's give college another try because my undergrad wasn't great at all. It was very, uh, you know, average and below average kind of, uh, I would say, because I was also working part time in some audit firm where I did not have a good experience at all. And I I swore I would never go to a mid-sized, you know, Indian CPA firm, but um, 
but yeah, I wanted to give college another try, and I just wanted to make sure that it's um, it's not too serious. I did not want crazy academics, but I did want to go to college again. So I think I was like, okay, if I sit and wait, even now, like when will I do it? So that's why I was like, okay, fine, let's just do it now. So as you said, like in finance, you don't need much degree or say masters or even to get into the finance but uh, there are many certifications and you have done cma previously and okay how did you choose those certifications like our all all, all those certifications so they are all hopefully like no one is going to pay you you have to pay it from your own pocket but how you are going to decide for those certifications like whether i go for cma cfp cfa any idea like from where to start right, so, your course right so first of all if you're working for a good company or well reputed company they will pay for your certification uh, let me start with that and there's also a lot of yeah there are a lot of resources uh, all the companies have um, especially in banking be it chase be it um, wells fargo or state street or anything all of them have their training uh, portals where you can learn and skill up and um i would say sometimes they have more resources available than colleges could provide you because you also have on the job training you also have access to so many people that if you don't know something you can if you're good at networking and if you're okay with seeking help it's very easy to find someone who's doing that kind of work and go and learn from them and find a way through so i wouldn't say that it's not easy to learn at a workplace it is and they provide uh, like i said they will pay for your certifications and everything and each company has their own policy on how they do it um but yes the the reason i did cma like i said is i did not want to be in audit and tax so if you're doing cpa your focus is more audit and tax i didn't want to do that i wanted to do you know um, strategic financial management and things like that and um, valuation and financial modeling for me uh, there is also cfa if you want to be into uh, investment portfolios and stuff like that and um, there's also frm for risk managers and especially if you're working in a bank it's a great certification to have because it's overall you understand what banks are dealing with so um it depends if you want to be a financial planner you can do you know a different set of certifications and things like that so i think this made more sense for me and also in terms of time and the effort that it took um i did not want to take up a course which where i cannot see the end and you just sit and study and study and study and then you don't know what's going to happen i did not want that so i wanted something i could manage with a full time job and all of that i really like the wording that uh, learning in college and learning in a job like you may learn more you can learn from your coworkers you yeah. can the training modules they provide there are basically above or up to the same mark of the college courses that you study yeah but right but college also has its place which is why i also chose to go to college because you can do all of this on your own and in fact you can just learn from youtube you know there is so much of resources on youtube and coursera and all of these places right but college still has relevance because um it takes less of effort to go to college to be honest because you have a whole bunch of teachers and professors who already have a plan for you you know you're not making your own study plan but if you're learning it through youtube you need to make your own study plan and of course there are all these internet gurus saying you know join my course and you have their fee and you know of course do that but you could also just go to college and you know you'll get real valuable education all at once and it's more wholesome which is why i still went to college despite having so much resources at my work even after so having so much of ex- number yeah. of ex- years of experience and uh, as you said like at jp morgan chase and currently you are at wells fargo like there were unlimited resources but i really like it that you opted for college life also like give it another chance and 
how you decided for the college in abroad like there are many thoughts going on or maybe rumors i said not thoughts there are many rumors people say tire one tire two tire three and then go for masters of finance or mba finance maybe my question is little wrong but what is your viewpoint currently these tires getting into top tier college make a difference getting into a job directly or there is no such rumor in reality it depends i would say because if you are for example into engineering and if you're a great engineer and if you can demonstrate that you're a great engineer i don't think um, an additional backing of the college name is going to help you much because if your skills are already clearly visible to an employer you don't need a college name to sell you you can sell yourself you know so there is to a certain extent i think the college name matters um because it shows how capable you are to get into what kind of a college but i don't think it's uh, the only thing that matters because there are many students especially you know if you're going from other countries if you're going to the us you cannot afford the kind of fee that the top colleges charge you and you do not um you know have all the time on earth to sit in do the scholarship applications and you know sit and wait are they going to give not give and then do 500 more applications because it is a very tiresome process and again if you're doing it with a full time job and if it is just you know a plan in the back of your mind you cannot sit and devote such kind of resources to all this um but again there are these consultancies which will help you but i don't think uh, it's the best way to do things because you can do it on your own you know why take someone's help for something you can do on your own and be genuine about it you know um, so i just wanted to do whatever i could best for myself so i wasn't looking for a specific tier one college or anything maybe i should have but uh, it wasn't uh, so important to me it was only your personal opinion like if you are doing a full time job and at the back end you have plans for higher studies maybe any college is best for you and second thing as you said like many times you have to pay heavy fees like that is not in the range of everyone mostly we can say and yeah. uh, did you think like uh, i as per your answer i can just guess it maybe i am wrong you did your applications on your own but many yeah. people try to go through the consultant or like many sideways do you suggest that or not at all i i don't know um see for some people yes it is difficult to sit and write a statement of purpose and and everything and do even the basics but i think come on if you cannot get yourself to make an application how do you think you're going to go through the entire course you know you're still going to need so much help to go through it and i i do not uh, it's just a personal opinion of mine nobody needs to go by it because everybody has their pluses and minuses in in life and not everybody's um, competence is in you know writing the best <laughs> sops i i understand that um but having said that i think as a student it's nice to develop those skills and to do it on your own rather than rely on a consultancy and also it's not like it's free <laughs> you know they also charge a very hefty fee so you rather sit and learn on your own because you're anyway in the journey of learning right so why not so on an average like you have met a lot of students right now in us in your masters so you might have discussed how they came to us like what was yeah. their application procedure so yeah. as per you were only thoughts i am saying like maybe it's not right but you might have studied on internet also on an average what is the minimum number of applications a candidate apply or you should apply or you have applied to get into any college in us again it's very uh, different for me because i was doing this after a couple of years of experience i think if i did it as a fresh graduate i would have a very different opinion on things um but again with uh, having established yourself even if it's a little in the industry let's say even 3 4 years of experience i think you kind of have an idea of um, what kind of 
courses you want to take in your master's program so that's a good place to start looking if you go to a, any university's website you can let's say you're doing master's in finance or in business analytics you can go see what their courses are and if you're really interested in that way you can shortlist your colleges and then apply only to what makes sense to you because if for example let's say i got an admit in um mba or in some other course i was not interested in i would not take it even if i got the admission i would not take it because i'm not interested in that and i think uh, that's what i said with the cpa also i know it's a little more prestigious and everything but i do not want to study audit and tax like i don't want to work in tax ever in my life and uh, thankfully i kind of got that clarity earlier on in life um so again if you're a student just do whatever internships you can <laughs> do whatever even if it's free work go do it because at least you learn what you don't like and i think that's very valuable experience to have and i don't like taxation <laughs> at all i think that's very evident i've said it five times now uh, so again you know just think like that e- either you know what you really want or you know what you don't want and then you know start eliminating it out of your options so uh that's the thing with colleges also i was looking for something um in california and uh, mm. also i was looking at college applications in the very last minute because i did not know when college applications happen because i don't have friends around me who are applying to colleges uh, all my friends were you know my age group and all working and everything so uh, you know just i applied very very late and uh, UCR was one of the colleges which was taking applications at that point of time because they start late. A lot of colleges, especially in the East Coast, start much earlier. Like we started in you know mid or late September, whereas a lot of other colleges start in August, so their application is also earlier. And I did not know literally. I just didn't know when the deadline was. So when I looked, I had lesser options, and I was like, okay, now do I want to wait for another year? So. I didn't want to do that, so I'm like, okay, let's just see what colleges are taking applications now and do the best we can. So after so yeah, you were... can go by whatever your problems are in life. <laughs> I can just make a like very interesting from your and talks only. I just made a very good op- opinion here. Just go for a free work and free work and get to know. Like you like this work, then go for full time or paid work. If you don't like, just quit it. absolutely <laughs> then you were not going to say like hi or hello to your boss like oh i'm <laughs> quitting because you paid me but still i don't like it if it is free yeah, you don't yeah, have so to say anything <laughs> exactly and do you know not just free work do you know smaller internships one one two month internships and i think especially in india there is so much opportunity but of course there is so much competition also, but that is your as well you know but in india these you don't have the visa hassle and everything you can do what you want so um just take advantage of it so as you said the word visa how difficult the process was when you applied for the college you got the admission and then there is a visa interview and again people are very scared like as i would like to add here like many freshers who has not given a single interview for a job are going to give an interview yeah. for a visa <laughs> so what was your process like how was it again for me it was much um, i wouldn't say simple uh, because everything was last minute so it was a lot of stress of just getting things done in time which was uh, more of an issue for me but otherwise in terms of the visa interview it was they just like ask for my name <laughs> which college i'm going to which course i'm doing where i work right now and things like that it was literally like just saying hi to the other person um i think they don't really bother you much if you seem to know what you're doing um i think they're smart i think they know their job well if you're lying that's when they'll press and you know want to get clarity out of you i think if you're honest in you know just to do it well i don't think there's any stress 
uh, in a visa interview process. But yes, the timelines and everything, you better know your deadlines and everything else. Yes. So I just want to make this uh, first conclusion from the talk. Just go to the internet and check the timelines. What are the, yes. what is the timeline yes. for college you want or? Deadlines, yeah, <laughs> for application deadlines and all of that. <laughs> OK, so what what options most people think or what options are available after you come to US on F1 visa as a student? Do you think getting free internship is easy or getting a paid internship is easy? Like what compare but is com it may not be comparable also maybe. But uh, what do you think if you know anyone while the journey? So I did not do an internship consciously oh, wow. because um, I did not want to. <laughs> and in um, in MPIN courses, in many um, MS courses, actually in business school, you have the option to do it in uh, one academic year. So I opted for that. Uh, if I took the internship, it would have taken longer. And I didn't want that because I genuinely enjoy working and I just wanted to get back to my you know to a full-time job and really work I did not want to do back and forth with college and work and all of that and also I didn't think internship at this point would um, help me much unless I was going to a different field because if I just want the same job that I had in India or something similar in those lines then I don't see how much value an internship is adding but if I wanted to go to you know slightly different feel or something a little different from what I was doing previously, then yes, internship would have helped me a lot. Um, but I just did not go to something that is very different from my work. It's slightly different. So I didn't think I uh, internship was a good idea for me. And also you need to time the market because if you do an internship, your graduation gets late. And if you think the market is going to be at that, be down at that time, then, you know, it's again taking um, calculated risk kind of a thing. So I did not want to graduate later. I wanted to graduate when I wanted to graduate. That was in June 23 and I thought it was a fairly decent time uh, to be in the job market. It was pretty challenging but it kind of worked out. So I'm, I'm happy with the choices I made. <laughs> I just want to make here my second wording for you like you are a real life analyst. Not only like in your job as an analyst, you decide what is the market, what is my work experience previously, how <laughs> I'm going to get a job, do I need internship or not? Like, how, yeah. how many people think of these things? They just go with the flow. They just try yeah, to go think, with the flow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people go with what other people say and don't think about their situation. Because some someone did something because it worked out for them. You know, you don't have to do what works out for someone else you do what works out for you and so you need to put a lot of thought into your own career and things you're doing and that's you know just the part of being more conscious and making conscious decisions in your life which a lot of people especially you know when you're young you don't bother about it too much but I think it's a valuable skill so if you want to do internships paid or unpaid does not really matter what matters is if you're doing an internship in the field you really want, <laughs> that is what matters because you know eyes on the prize. What you want at the end of you know the journey is a job in the field that you really want. So doing an irrelevant internship, whether paid or unpaid, does not really matter. You just don't go in the wrong direction. If you want to go this way, go this way. You know. Even if it's unpaid or whatever, just don't go somewhere else and then try to come back and do all of that. Yeah. So after six years, when you decided like for college journey again, what was your thoughts about the course workload? Do you think it was valuable and you can and manageable also? Like if you are going through courses, maybe there are many courses that are not valuable. Like as you were an analyst, you might have planned everything. Like I'm going to take this course. I'm going to take this course because after six years of experience, you know very well the relevancy of the course and the job yeah. responsibilities. How do you think like managed it, the course workload? 
so i did because i did the whole thing in one academic year i had to take four courses each um quarter and every quarter i had to take four courses so there's no re- time to relax over here when you plan like this uh, but that's also because you know that's how i work best personally as an individual if things are relaxed i won't do a thing <laughs> so i better put pressure on myself and get things done quickly um my course work so i just try to manage it i didn't want a lot of heavy stuff and also again there there were a few courses in finance as well which i thought hey i'm not going to be a day trader or i'm not going into trading so i know that's a fantastic course but it's not what i need or what i want to do even so why take that course right so i was just selective in terms of what i want and i really believe in do what you really want don't do something for name sake or because someone else said or because someone said it will get, get you money someone thinks that it will make you successful just don't do that do what you really want that also it was very simple for me to pick my courses i knew what i wanted <laughs> <laughs> like uh, as you said there are many day trading courses or some similar courses related to stock market and this is really you can say many people think the only money lies in the stock market in us mainly i i am not saying about many other countries but most of the millionaires billionaires are in the stock market in united states and what is your view point on that like instead of going for the stock market study mostly even if you are doing masters of finance and go to some other options other than stock market financing i think there are different ways to learn uh, how to invest and even at university you have um, you know like these like we had highland or financial group and um, had a student investment fund and all of these clubs at at college which teach you how to invest or allow you to invest um in a different in a certain fund and not like really college funds but you you can do things like start small or have a dummy account in one of those i know there, there was this website where it was like a simulation of the stock market and stuff like that so you can do different things to learn you can also learn from the internet but again how you invest and how you do your asset allocation how you do your stock picking and everything is is a, an entire you know discipline of finance and it takes time to learn all that i wouldn't suggest someone to just watch two videos on youtube and go and do it um and a lot of times what is also true in the stock market is you just buy your stock hold on to it and in the long term you will see the returns you know you don't have to back and forth sell buy and time the market and if you're not a finance professional you don't have to and you can but you can still invest in the stock market you know and hold it long term and you will still get your returns so it's really about stock picking and asset allocation a lot of people also just invest in real estate and make a lot of money out of it so it's about where do you want to put your money So, I think it's a very personal journey of people, and with their finances, a lot of people cannot even save up. First of all, to invest, so it's it's a very long journey actually. Okay, as you said, uh, after the courses we discussed, uh, as you said in your words about the college clubs, do you think they were really helpful getting into the club in a college, or it is just like mandatory as a coursework? so it is not a coursework which is what i absolutely oh, wow. love about Great. it <laughs> yeah it is not coursework so it is additional and it is optional and i Great. think um, some people get into every single club they can well you can do that if if that is how you want to find out what's good for you yes do that but if again if you know that this is good for me stay there invest in it put more time um be more involved in the group where you think you can add value and the group can also add value to you kind of thing right so uh, the finance club for me really added value and i was happy with the opportunity that it gave me there was this competition at um, cfa orange county which i got to participate which was great so 
it will give you opportunities you've got to look for the right opportunities pitch for them and go with it and be confident also and again just put in the work because i sat in with my team and we were working through christmas actually for that uh, presentation and the uh, the report that we were doing it was a equity research report so again it's hard work but i think it's worth it and it depends on the club also some clubs are just you know <laughs> hanging out and stuff like that and you know everything under the umbrella word networking and while it's great but i don't i'm not a big fan of it um, because i think this is not the time for me to do that i think it's the time for me to build my skills and no amount of networking is going to save you if you don't have skills so <laughs> first things first okay just coming to the skills now from your wording only <laughs> you can just say the gen- general skills or generic skills i'm not talking or asking you particularly about the banking sector but uh, mm-hmm. what are the most important skills do you think even not for masters of finance for any master candidate or after masters what are the important skills and what are the best ways to learn those skills no well i think uh... i don't know about generic skills like that i think first be good in the technical skills a lot of people i have seen especially even on their linkedin they have like some 50 skills most of them are unrelated to each other <laughs> i don't think that work even if you're just going to lie about it at least make sure that your lies make sense you know <laughs> don't just be so random about it um so i would say soft skills are important but technical skills are also you know the the pillars to the whole building that you're trying to build over there you cannot just build it on soft skills soft skills are additional and good to have given that you have the technical skills if you have no technical skills and if you're just all talk some day people will find that out and you're out oh. you know? so soft skills has its place and i think it is rather easier to learn than technical skills as students especially people who come without experience if they're coming right out of undergrad focus and build your portfolio and build your you know whatever projects you're doing do a good job because in interviews when people ask you questions you should have examples to give them saying i did this i did that i know how this works and yeah if you're all talk and if it's all just fluff the person interviewing you will know you know don't think that they're stupid no matter how much soft skills you have if someone is a manager obviously they have a little more than you so just respect that and don't try to think that you're the coolest or something like focus on technical skills i would say but yes, the- soft skills are required like don't take it for granted but yeah keep your balance <laughs> from the word 50 skills only i know there is a website called linkedin or application linkedin for job search and i don't know why they are allowing people to put 50 skills up to maximum on the profile so having 50 skills same on the resume do you think is it going to help you or it is just wastage of time and also taking more like white space of your resume converting it into black only <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way to put it i would say the initially um, people might have to do whatever it takes to get through the automated tracking system and all of that right to just get your resume through these systems as a task so even if you're going to put all the skills on the world onto your resume if you get an interview call you better make sure that you actually have those skills because otherwise you're just lying and you know there is nothing worse than uh, not being genuine and lying in your interviews not having skill is still okay because you can learn skills but if you're lying outright lying to people who want to hire you i think that gives a more uh, bad picture about you and you don't want that so put skills that you have that is all <laughs> there's, there's no need to add that's so, not enough you know that's is. what i want to tell people and pressures that it is enough whatever skills you have whatever you've done 
just be honest about it elaborate about it and speak you know be specific with uh, what you have done rather than just adding too much okay i want to like based on my own analysis i was checking a job on linkedin and a job on the job linkedin allows job like job poster who is posting a job to put maximum 10 skills but as a candidate you can put 50 skills <laughs> wow like yeah i think that is also because you you don't apply to just one job right because for let's say just financial analyst or even for my position as senior financial analyst when i was applying at one place they asked for certain skills at another place they asked for a certain other skills but they're very similar but what happens when you don't let's say out of those 10 skills if you only have two and there's something let's say like communication you know that's a skill that the person put in the job requirement and if communication is not a skill on your linkedin profile then it'll show that you have lesser skills but that's just not a skill you thought was important enough to put on there so so i think uh, you know that's with the whole hashtag culture today <laughs> with how things are working so uh, just you know um, have your top 10 skills or something um, broadly in the field that you're looking for and stick to that you know everything else is just secondary even if you have like five or six other skills you want to add but those are secondary but your top 5 to 10 which are your core skills i feel should all be cohesive and you should be able to explain every single one of them and i think in linkedin also on in your top skills it only allows five skills mm. that you can add so so have your core proper you know everything else you can be changing so after the skills as you said you are going for the interview after the ats software what was your interview journey after you graduated like as you said you graduated in one academic year lot of people don't do that i know personally i know and uh, you did that decision based on your analytical decisions you <laughs> studied everything the market the scenario the work work x and you don't think internship or something similar is going to really help you so you opted for full time what was that journey like you came you come to call is stressful then after job again stress like searching for job is stressful how was your journey let's make it like you can make it short or long as you think i think uh, it was it was very quick for me because in the first quarter you're just like okay where did i come <laughs> and you're just i was just honestly missing swiggy <laughs> more than anything else uh, so you are just getting used to things for the first quarter and also finding a part time on campus job and things like that so my first quarter was extremely busy and if you're in a business school obviously you'll have enough events to attend uh, to keep you even more busy so yeah that was how my first quarter went even before i knew it was over and um, the second and third were also very quick um uh, i was lucky to have find part time work that was also nice and i enjoyed what i did um it was a few different kind of skills and it's nice you know to go from working like a serious corporate job to doing a little more laid back on campus kind of a job it's very very different and it was nice um again getting used to that was another challenge and obviously there's course work and all the assignments that you need to do and if you're on part of clubs there is that and then you also need to learn how to cook and <laughs> do all those things <laughs> in your personal time so um it it was just really quick if i can describe my college life i would just say it was quick uh, i found and made a lot of wonderful friends Uh, and again you're going out with them you also want to travel because you you know in the us so obviously if you are in california especially you want to travel and um, i was in south california i think the best place i could be um, so i was glad to go around with my friends so so yes it was fun but it was also quick um, i wouldn't say stressful it, it's just a lot of work and i think it's good work which will help you in life so i wouldn't want to call it stress because as long as you know how to relax i don't think <laughs> it matters just take enough breaks 
how was your particular job search you were only in very brief or in very short the job search was um, tricky uh, again you need to sit down find that mm-hmm. clarity and you can't just go out there and uh, apply to 500 jobs of course you can do that and you know just by statistics you might get to the interviews because you made so many applications but i again like i said make conscious decisions or at least i try to so i would have to sit down and find clarity and what i want uh, where we have these kind of jobs what kind of companies to apply to and sometimes you know it gets difficult and your plan doesn't work and then you just get desperate so you just apply to again every single company and that also doesn't work so so you just go back and forth change your strategy see what works for you see what the market is like at that moment and you'll find your way just be patient <laughs> that's all and that's all i had to tell myself also uh, it is very nerve wracking because it is kind of a risk especially because um your you've taken huge decisions you've left a career that was going perfectly well and you've come here so you better justify it to yourself because it's still an investment you made um and just make sure your decisions make sense to you at the end of the day so um, of course there could be pressure from outside i don't know it it's different for each person based on their friends their family and how and what pressures they are dealing with life it's very different i think i've been fortunate enough to have very supportive parents and everything so just find your so, way stick to so it so good to know so good to know like at each step i would say i'm so glad like in this video we are i am even understanding much many things from you at each step you are trying to make the conscious decision like not thinking of the word numbers that people say apply to 500 jobs not thinking of the word say just keep on applying and something will pop up there will be if you are going for yeah. 10 interviews at least one will hire you that is like i don't think that's true by the way because a lot of people did not get hired and, and also i think this uh i was very sure and certain about having to sit and do things uh, on my own and make my own plan because i've already applied for jobs in india you know previously and i know what the job search situation is like and it's not something new to me it's it's of course a new country but job search is job search you know it's difficult everywhere you know that's there is opportunity and there there is the hr team trying to really bridge that gap and then there are candidates so yeah i just uh, can make a conclusion that as a fresher it may be difficult because you don't know the exact job search way or the methodology to follow to be patient also as you said the word yeah, be patient exactly. when applying because when you have lot of experience and not like lot like not as 10 years but even 3 yes, years 4 years <laughs> yeah. if you have applied to 2 3 jobs or switched also exactly you know what to expect you know and even if you don't have that experience because see everybody started at some point right so even i had my fair share of heartbreaks when i was applying for the first time and i'm like what is this world why is this like this you know? so i also had my um, fair share of all of those um, issues of job application as a first time but i think to learn and it's okay you don't have to learn in india only you can learn here also it's fine <laughs> so do you uh, like uh, last time i asked one question like uh, do freshers should apply for masters or no and uh, what is your view point upon that like do freshers apply or they should take at least uh, one year or minimum one year of experience before coming to us if they want to pursue career related to like investment related to banking related to say analyst analytical roles i know in it sectors mainly people come for masters even as a fresher they get job not talking about current market but on an average what is your view point for the any candidate who is going for business finance accounting or say strategic roles as a fresher or as a minimum experience i think uh, see the thing is a lot of times people think 
uh, um, master degree, you'll get a high position or something in a company. That is not true. Uh, if you do not have any work experience, or let's say you had less than two years work experience, you start out as a fresher again. And it is not because your experience in a different country does not matter. That is not true at all. Your experience, no matter in which country, matters. And I think I have myself as proof to say that because I did not start as a fresher here. No, I had experience in a different country, and it mattered here. So there's a lot of rumors and myths that your know, your experience in India does not matter. That is not true at all. It matters, but if it is less than two years, people don't. think that you really understood much in the first two years of of your career which is why they will still take you as a fresher which i think is a fair deal um anything more than two years or three years you you can look for a, a level up but otherwise it's fine and um, as long as you are aware of what to expect in the job market it is fine but if you think just because you did a masters just because you did um an mba if you can you know be like no i want you know the next in the next level position that is not how things work so just setting your expectation right from what a masters degree can provide you is is more than enough so it doesn't matter if you do it right after your undergrad or you know you do it after a couple of years just know what to expect that's all and it's different for every field it's very different in accounting as well because in accounting if you're doing the typical uh, cpa kind of a role then there even if you have a masters degree they will still need you to have a certification you know so it's not enough so you need to know within your field what the expectation is basically and which keeps changing time to time company to company so do your research yeah again do your research the last word and the most important word of today's talk is do your research first use the resources available and then take the next step not make the decision and take the do next what you step you want you know just do absolutely what you want if if you finish your undergrad and you really want to do a masters degree and you really want to go to you know that particular university that particular program if that's what you want do it and if you want to just get a job or do um, you know an internship in your home country do that do not uh, think that if you do this this will give you more money because a lot of times as students your whole um, you know all of your planning is around what will give me more money you know i think like just if money wasn't a factor what would you do what would you really want to do so at least as a student give yourself a few years to live without money it's fine i know it's very difficult and it's not a nice thing to say but just put in that kind of work for the first two three years in your career so that later on you won't be clueless because i have seen a lot of people while working who uh, just did you know step one step two step three just do whatever your parents say do whatever your neighbors say and everything and now they're in in the middle of their life with two children and you know they need to take care of the family they need to pay their bills and now they cannot be like okay now i want to do a masters degree right and now they cannot say okay i don't like this career i don't know why i took it i took this because my friend took it or because my mom told me to do it you can't change things later in your life it's easier to do it at the start so do what you want if you are not going to do it now when will you do it <laughs> you can't do it later on it's more difficult to do it later on I just catch here one word from your talk, uh, the word money. I can understand <laughs> how, after having a good experience, well stable career, and then going for a master's or another educational course without money, I can understand now. <laughs> I can understand how you absolutely. Felt. <laughs> it takes away the freedom you had, and it takes away your lifestyle and everything because it was so much easier. Uh, you know, every month you're getting certain amount, and you can spend it however you want, and that goes away. You know, even if you have an on-campus job, it's like very little money. It doesn't matter, especially if you come from, you know, a different country where the standard is not the same. I I only mean in terms of exchange rates. <laughs> if it's not the same as uh, the US or something, I know there's a financial burden, so it 
pinches you a little more. Okay, we are uh, about to now conclude this conversation. I and I'm really thinking like first time my this conversation was literally too serious because I can understand you have a way way more knowledge than anyone could share, particularly on the masters. So I decided to learn <laughs> from your perspective you, more. No, it's like yeah. learn from your perspective on more. Even if it's you are saying it's not true, but I know how humble you are. And uh, <laughs> last but not the least, what is your advice like for the current or upcoming students? Oh, there are many regulations are changing every day, but still the baseline will still remain same. The pillars of the goal educational studies will remain same, like how to get into college, how to pursue for a courses, how to pursue your career dream. And even if you need a career transition, how to? What is your last advice for everything? I would really say just do what you want because it's your time. You need to decide what it's worth. Don't do something because someone else said and someone else said this is success. Don't let others define what is success or what should what you should be doing. Um, and especially especially your uncles and your aunts and people who have no clue about the career you want. They shouldn't be the one deciding what you should do. So at least if you want to do something, ask people within the field and take uh, you know notes from them. But again, even their journey is very different. So don't try to do what has worked for someone else. It might not work for you. So just do what you want. It's, it's your life. It's your time, your money, and your parents' money. <laughs> so it's about your ability to convince your parents especially if you don't have your money and like to respect them if they if they say no or uh, you know if they have their apprehensions and they say no you should work right now get some money because you, you know you can't expect everyone to have that kind of finances to say okay you want to do this go take all my money you know so you need to understand your situation where you stand what kind of skills you have and if something can help you then do that so it's not that uh, you know doing a master's degree is is everything, and it will definitely put you you know miles ahead. It's not like that. Sometimes doing putting in the work, getting your experience, and then doing a master's degree, be it in India or be it abroad, it doesn't matter. Uh, just find the right college for you, the right program for you, and just do what's good for you. That's all. You need to know that nobody can ever tell you that because I will tell you this for sure that. Nobody is going to think for you, even if you pay pay them to do it. They will not think for you. It, it's a very diff difficult thing to do. And I don't think anybody wants to do it. They will give you their opinion. They, they will not say, if you do this, this will happen, then this will happen, and this will happen, you know. And nobody takes responsibility um, for them. I can give you my opinion, but if it doesn't work out for you, I'm not going to take any responsibility of it. <laughs> not with anybody else. So, so you make your decision, and you are responsible for it. So yeah. So it's like a, education is also like a corporate world. Nobody is responsible. <laughs> I think education is an investment, and you should know the right time to make an investment. <laughs> oh, okay. So this would be the. <laughs> Last question for the talk, like was the investment you made in your masters? Did mm -hmm. it double your money, triple your money or what people say like 10 times? Yeah, actually it did, in, especially just because of the exchange rate being different and also the kind of money you make here is very different, but your expenses also here are very different. My rent in India was very different than my rent here in the US. Um, but yes, you, you get um, you get an opportunity and you get the money and everything. So for me, I would say it was worth it um, because money is not the only thing uh, that I was interested in. I had other personal um, reasons for coming here. So it worked out for me and I'm happy I did this. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. We are so glad and at least I would say our viewers will be very happy after listening to your kind words like do the best and do the investment and don't think only the money there may be some personal thought 
it's also people have different personal opinion moving abroad or moving out of country or they may have plans for future like okay let's make few investments make some money come back and start a business and that's all i don't know what is your career plan for the future but if you would like to share in less than a minute like how would you define or what would you like to think of career in future to be honest i i do not not know and um, i say keep you should plan you should plan and do your research but i think you should also live in the moment and know your next step you don't have to know like the next 10 steps but just know your next step and right now the next step for me is to do a good job prove myself in office and you know just get a good name for myself first so that's my next step that's all so it's really good and you have all the like previous decisions made the best and i hope and i wish you will make your future decisions also the best so we are Thank here you. to say you best of luck and last but not the least i wish this video is sponsored by swiggy because you said in the very <laughs> talk like you missed no, the swiggy no it's free advertising <laughs> <laughs> no i am just saying i wish swiggy can start business in united states or swiggy just <laughs> absolutely but also it's very different here right because uh, there's no population is not so dense so it just takes a lot of time over here on like in india okay like uh, if uh, someone is knowing someone in swiggy just reach out to them and say someone is missing <laughs> you from bangalore in united states at least absolutely i miss a lot of indian startups here and, and especially in bangalore it's i think the tech there is way more advanced so okay and that's really good to know and hopefully soon even after tech like the finance industry the manufacturing industry or maybe there are different sectors automobile where we will also grow in india and let's see how far it goes and it was really nice talking to you mansa and we are again thankful to you for you were really serious yeah. discussion serious talk <laughs> i would say and if anyone would watch this video he or she can literally double think before making a decision like you have to be patient you have to make the use of resources you are not here to show your 50 skills on your resume <laughs> or to the interviewer you are here to prove them the only one or less than 10 skills that they need for their job and if you can prove that like you are good you can do that 10 skills they are going to hire you they even not hire they are going to get admission to you in university or <laughs> only this way is the life is going to be the best thank you bye bye thank you thanks for having me